is 13 Castaways, 6 co-hosts and 1 podcast. This is Stranded in Tanzania and I'm your host Pootie. Today we're joined by 6 co-hosts and alumni of Stranded, Hannah and Danny, who originally played in Stranded in Turks and Caicos, season 32. Taints. Hey. Talk. Taints forever. Nate, who originally played in Stranded in Faroe Islands, season 25. Hello. Levita, who originally played in Stranded for Victory, season 36. Originally played in Victory. Great. <laughs> Great one. And I guess we'll be joined by Joaquin, who originally played in Stranded in Indonesia, season 27. I am here. and Oh, he's here. I, I, yeah, come on. I'm, at, I'm finishing a bag of cheese because we only have a little bit left. And uh, it's, it's the bachelor life. <laughs> How was your uh, tacos, walk? They were so good. There's a taco shell company called El Milagro in Chicago that they just make amazing taco shells. All right. Nobody cares about that. And that's right, our so- plug for the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. El Milagro taco shells. <laughs> yeah. I do. T- today's podcast is sponsored by El Milagro taco shells. <laughs> no, not really. But I hope uh, if you want to sponsor us, please let us know and yeah, leave- we'll give you a good deal. Leave a like and a, a comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, today, we're going to take a look back at the post swap of Tanzania and the lead up to the epic merge tribal council where we most recently lost Chelsea. Boo. <laughs> I believe we talked about the Jessica boot, maybe, but we'll go over that again. Not even. <laughs> Not even? No, okay. we haven't talked about it at all. Karishma and on. Okay. So obviously Karishma left. Uh, we talked about that one for sure. No, I think the last podcast was right before the swap or at the swap. Damn. It was the swap round. It was um, right after uh, they went to tribal council and then they swapped and then we podcast. Okay. All right. Well, let's right. talk. Let's talk about the swap. Peroto went first where they booted Karishma. Uh, not too much to talk about there other than the fact that she was pregnant and after was she was voted off, got the clothes hanger out. So sad. Lost our first stranded baby. Yeah. Tragic. Yeah. Of course that, Tough times. That would happen to the first stranded baby, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> it's probably for probably. the best course. That would probably bring on the apocalypse if it's not already upon us. Right. I do just want to take a moment and say that at least Charlie gave us an iconic exit. It may have been a kind of lackluster Caesar from him. I know that he was busy, but at least we got a funny tribal. And a good meme out of it. Yeah, he was busy. <laughs> uh, special K, as uh, Tommy referred to uh, appropriately. Special K was a great nickname. Yeah, he didn't even understand how good it was at the time, but that's where we are. We'll leave it at that. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, we expected a lot more from Devon. Obviously, we didn't get that. I don't know if he gets another chance, but it probably won't be anytime soon. Because, as we all know, when you don't deliver... You don't get the call back. Well, and also he's on a cast that's crack. Like, Devon is fun, but like when you have somebody like him who's getting outshone by currently at least 10 players who made the merge, you know, when we look back at the season at people that we want to bring back, like he's not going to be a person to think of. Yeah, uh, we we had talked about like who we wanted to lose pre-merge. Obviously, we wanted a Christian boot, which we did not expect would ever happen. And we lucked out tremendously. That's a little bit in the future, though. But I think, you know, the pre-merge went as well as we could hope it to in terms of uh, leaving us with the best cast in the merge. Of course, we lost um, Jessica and Elizabeth. Jessica boot. I just want to talk about that. The challenge before that was when everybody was posting the little letters in immunity and Proto ended up winning by a lot. Like they were very close to winning, like by a real lot. And then they won. Then it was Nayuri who eventually got it. It took forever. And Miambo. Uh, Dean was on the last letter, and instead of pulling up a, a letter Y, I think he pulled up the letter M and said, like, oh, I fucked up. And it's because he threw it. And that was <laughs> not sh- exactly sure if I agree with the strategy even post then. But at the time, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, um, a horrible throw job. I don't. What is up with the two tribes that have active people throwing so early into the swap? Like, I don't even remember which one was first because they were both pretty egregious. I think Jessica's boot was before Elizabeth's. Is that right? Yeah, that was four. Yeah. That was before. So during that tribal council, th- these four guys, Dean, Aaron, 
Carl, Carl and Nick. And Nick. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> the, Ni- the Nairi Douche Bro Alliance that we'll call them. Yeah, these guys get together and decide to like throw the challenge. Why? I don't know. There's not a clear majority on the tribe. I don't know why they felt the need. And then like, you know, they didn't want to boot Lauren after that. So what were they going to do if they lost like again? That's going to really fuck up their numbers. I'm not sure why they were so gung ho about doing it. That first chance that they got. That that's the part that I disagreed with. I mean, well, I disagree with them throwing in general, but to do it so early, you just swapped, you know, your one tribal council into the swap and you just want to throw a challenge. You don't know how many more there's going to be when you're going to swap again. And they say, we just we need to weaken the people that we know Jessica is aligned with, even though they actually had no idea who Jessica was working with. They were just making it all up in their heads and decided they needed to throw it to get rid of her. That's the craziest part, too. And alliances at this point are so all over the place. They're not even sure who's working with who, what new alliances might have formed. I don't understand what they were thinking. I think they made a lot of assumptions and were incorrect about a lot of them. That is the theme of that tribe, though. I mean, Carl, Dean, Aaron, like the three of them, their paranoia levels and like their reads on the game. They get some things right. And I think the reason they get things right is because they're just constantly throwing out theories and like 80% of them are wrong. Yeah. And a broken clock. But they right believe them wholeheartedly. Yeah. I mean, let's think about on the Orange Tribe, like Dean was stalking the who's online and he saw that Nick was in the Immunity Idol forum because that's where you go to guess the clues for the Immunity Idol. He assumed that means that Nick found the Immunity Idol. And so that started a whole thing of you know, before they decided to throw and get rid of Jessica, he was against Nick because Nick had an idol. And then then it becomes, oh, well, John is obviously running this eight person alliance like we need to take out John. So we need to take out Jessica because Jessica is friends with John. Like their whole thing is just like run by paranoia and run by spending too much time stalking like things that they don't fully understand on the board. Another thing was that John passed his idol over to Jessica and she didn't play it. And that was so disappointing for me. Like, sorry to her. But for me, the obvious move is to idol out the one who is clearly throwing it. So clearly throwing it. If you're getting an idol from somebody, then maybe it means you're in trouble. I was going to bring that up. Our hero, John of the season, decides to make a move that we were all kind of hoping he would make where he tosses his idol over to Jessica and she doesn't play it. And then she goes home in a five to one, no less. Yeah. John is left like, what in the hell just happened? Like she had my idol. What? <laughs> how did she go home? She just felt comfortable enough not to play it. I, you know, Jessica was someone who was very arrogant about how she played. I think probably from it being her first game and she was humbled swiftly. Yeah. You know, I talked about this with Levita, and I think we've mentioned it on the server a couple times, but I think there was a very difficult read to make there for Jessica that had she played in maybe one or two other games, even she may have been able to tell, you know, that, oh, people aren't messaging me that frequently. And when they do, they just say it's still Lauren. Right. So she had no clue. I was hoping that like Nick or Carl or somebody was going to be like, hey, sorry, like we're flipping on you. And then she could, you know. Well, say fuck you and throw it in their face. But there weren't very many signs and especially not signs that you would pick up on if you've never played a game before. Well, I think that's the other thing is that these guys threw a challenge to get rid of someone when there are still idols in play. They don't know who has the idol from the original tribes. And then she gets tossed an idol from another tribe. That's probably a possibility they didn't even consider. And really, she could have done some serious damage to their game. Uh, has she had a little bit more awareness? So these guys really lucked out here. Most definitely. And then they never lost again. Yeah. What are you talking about? It wasn't luck. It was pure strategy from Carl. <laughs> yeah. We're going to jump swiftly into the next tribal council where another tribe decides to throw a challenge. Looking at you, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> this was crazy. Missy develops this bond because her and Angelina are from Mississippi. Of course, we all know that they have both are friends of Reem or or recruits from Reem. You know, of course, we get a pang of nervousness. Missy probably clued into that fact that maybe that's how they both found out about Stranded. There was no confirmation of that. Of course, we put a stop to that. But that led to a slight panic from the host, but also ultimately Missy deciding to 
flip on her alliance. I don't know. I think Missy would have flipped regardless of who it was. I think that that was just her chance to flip. I think there's a multitude of reasons, one of which is knowing Angelina was from Mississippi. The other is when Elizabeth finds out about Missy's idol that Missy didn't tell Elizabeth. about, And now Missy's thinking that she's lost Chelsea and that Chelsea is no longer aligned with her. And I think that only further complicated things because now, you know, confirmation bias, you're saying, oh, no, I'm on the bottom. I'm going to be voted out. They're looking to throw a challenge. They're looking to get rid of me and take out my idol. And as we've seen, Missy's not necessarily the most level headed player. So, (laughs) you know, little things like that build up. So a stranded star is born that night. Uh, Front runner Elizabeth, like we've all spoken about how. We thought she was playing the best game. I know Danny ranked her highest in his winner contender list several weeks in a row. You know, she had a lot of money. She was doing very well with alliances, playing very strategically. And all it takes in Stranded is just one wild hair from one of the crazy people we cast to completely destroy a game. And we saw that happen very quickly when Missy decides to flip on her original Miumbo people, which was kind of insane frankly we spoke about how big of a move and how many how uh, i'm really careless of a move it was i love it i'm glad it happened unfortunately for elizabeth i'm I'm upset that it backfired on her but i think it really kick-started the season in a big way if i you know i thought that that jessica tribal council was absolutely insane this one managed to top that tenfold Oh, most definitely. And then the reactions just from the other tribes as they're finding out Elizabeth is the one who left, thinking, wait, didn't she pay 19 coins to get on this tribe? How did she leave? <laughs> yeah. What idol was played? Where were the idols played? And all uh, another just round of assumptions from our uh, douche bros <laughs> the peanut. to entertain themselves with. My favorite one came from Aaron, where he lists, he's like, well, maybe Missy flipped. And then he goes, but that makes absolutely no sense. Like, what advantage is there for her in the game to flip on Elizabeth? And it's actually what happened. But it's like his least likely scenario. Well, didn't she like she did some things that should have clued him in very obviously to the fact that she flipped. Most notably that she threw out a whisper cross tribal to John, of all people, after the flip. Or the fact that, you know, it was Prisoner's Dilemma and Missy, of all people, is the one that grabbed the immunity idol. Yeah. Uh, by the way, <laughs> R.I.P. to the uh, the hot tamale challenge. That was a friggin' hot mess. Not with this crew. We couldn't do that one. Yeah, we, we did a last minute flip to Prisoner's Dilemma, which Missy then took. Immediately. Yeah, not without even questioning it. So that should include everyone in. But I guess they were like, well, Dan was going to take it. So she took it. Did she beat? Davy's record of 14 seconds. Yeah, it was three seconds. Oh, man. Dan was a second <laughs> early. So, yeah, Dan Dan put put in up 59 and then Pootie's go post went and then Missy was three seconds later. She did not see Dan's post. I can guarantee it would have taken more than four seconds yeah. for her to do uh, that. And I could say there's no way that 14 seconds is the record on Prisoner's Dilemma. People wait for that timer and then post immediately. I, I posted like a second after the first time yeah. I did it. Yeah, th- there's no way. I mean, I would say three seconds is slow for some of the people that have competed in uh, Prisoner's Stranded Dilemma. Stranded didn't start until season 32, okay? Yeah, right. Uh, as the person in the oldest season here, it started season 25 when I was voted out. Yeah, then uh, Missy Boots, Elizabeth, and all hell breaks loose. The following tribal council, I guess we can move into the next round. Finally, we have a challenge that's pretty much individual or at least relies on the tribe but funny thing during this challenge we have to mention carl fucking up a lot of times and then jack fucking up a lot this was a super close challenge people were submitting within a second of each other a lot like it didn't just happen once it happened at least five or six times yeah i really loved this challenge for a lot of reasons but i think we really got to see people's challenge skills and it really put a um target on some people's backs So, Puroto, of course, loses his challenge. From there, they decide to finally get rid of Christian, who had been lacking severely in challenge strength. I thought the really endearing part is that, you know, we've gotten these other two tribes who are overplaying so hard and and really being extremely duplicitous. And then we have Puroto, who are genuinely bonding. They're making decisions based off of good relationships they have, regardless of previous tribal alliances you know they decide to get rid of christian over jack who they like more 
Jack, of course, bonds with Kara. And I I just thought the whole thing was really endearing and a stark contrast to what we were getting with Missy and her original tribe mates. They even call themselves the Potato Tribe. Yeah. (laughs) It was super cute. Uh, I need to mention there was a little bit of craziness that happened there. It was kind of they were sort of deciding between Christian and Jack, but um, they were leaning towards Christian. And then a response to a post in tribal council, Christian referred to whoever is going home tonight as a she. And that's because he his first language is not English and they use a feminine pronouns for a person in French. So that got everybody, that got a lot of girls very confused of, wait, am I getting voted yeah. tonight? Who's she? What's, What's he talking going about? On? And then some whispers came um, up. She was talk. Uh, Christian was talking about she as in Jack, as in a person, as in yeah. the she feminine pronoun as a person, but he meant Jack. It looked bad. Oh, yeah, so that was Christian's ass. It w- I think he was already going home, but that just like sealed the deal. That even flipped Allison, who was not going to vote for him, into voting for him. So then, after that debacle, we get to the merge. Is there anything pre-swap we need to mention before we move on to the merge? Because there's a lot to unpack here. We can talk about the fact that Missy found another idol, and then again with Tommy, sold him fake clues. Like, said she was giving him the clues to the idol, but then made up fake ones and sold them to him for a stranded point. Yeah, Missy. That bitch is crazy. (laughs) Missy's nuts. Also, Nick was big on uh, rooking people out of their stranded coin. Nick has been, like, super low-key as far as a character goes, but, like, the one running gag of the season is if there's a way to steal coins and, like, be able to tell people that he doesn't have enough and needs more, like, Nick just takes everybody's money. You brought something up and I was going to talk about, but I forgot what. Oh, the idols. Who who all got idols pre uh, post swap? I know John found another idol. Yeah, so John found the idol on uh, Peroto. Missy found the idol on Miombo. So they both found two idols, both pre swap and during swap. And then Carl found the uh, new Neri idol. Okay, gotcha. All right, so let's let's dive into this merge tribal council. So as we have done. For three or four seasons now, we've done these instant merge councils where everyone is unaware that there's a merge. Then we just drop a merge on them and tell them they've got an hour to figure out a boot, basically, while we do some kind of immunity. This season, we mixed in Stranded Coin. We had planned to do the auction for the public community idol. We wanted to do the public community idol this season and involve Stranded Coin somehow. So we decided to do a silent auction for it. We had also had the idea to do a tribal challenge as the final immunity where people would pool coins uh, and the tribe that gave up the most coins would all be immune going into the merge council. We did not think about how both of those would interact together until it was happening live. And I realized, shit, everyone is pooling their money for this public idol. That's going to screw up the other chance for people to have tribal immunity. So on the fly, I was talking to Tim about it and I said, well, why don't we make it so that they get the option to take the idol once they've bid. So first we give that option to John, John. who comes in first with 55 coins. He decides, you know what? I'm going to use that money for my tribe so that we'll all be immune. So he passes. We love you, John. Yeah. King John. Nick gets the offer for 53 coins and decides to just pass on it. I don't think because of his tribe. I think just because he didn't want to spend the money. So then it goes to Lauren of all people. Lauren giving us a heart attack decides to like flip flop on taking the idol. And of course, she's like the perfect person to get this idol because she was the main target for this tribal council. Her tribe was not coming to defend her. No, (laughs) she decides to take the idol. Luckily for us. We love you, Lauren. That's when shit really hit the fan. Uh, So I took notes of this tribal council because this is all insane. Somebody butt in and interrupt me. If they have other notes. Just before you get started, Pootie, I would like to say that whispering completely changed this twist from the way that you guys have done it in the past. Because when we did this twist on our tribe, when we played, like, no one talked because no one wanted to give anything away. And I think that whispering made this ten times better of a twist. Yeah, yeah. We knew that it was going to change and we decided, you know, do we just give them uh, messaging access? And then we decided... No, let's let me make them whisper because somebody will screw up whispering. And they did. So Angelina starts the tribal council by saying, 
she doesn't need to whisper because Miyambo all knows who to, who to go for. She's referring to Lauren. Uh, the auction takes place. We discussed that already. The original plan was to vote for Lauren, who warns them not to. So that's what spooks people into thinking, oh, she might have won the lottery. The Nairi bros are freaking out because of the numbers, specifically Aaron, who has not heard from any Miyumbo people. It's at this point that Dan tells Lauren she will make history as the most annoying person in the history of Strand. <laughs> <laughs> Original Miyumbo seems content with booting Lauren. Dan tells Carl they can scoop up Missy and Angelina, but they are disposable. I thought that was hilarious. Dan really stepped up as our supervillain during this uh, tribal council. So this is when the public idol is announced. A funny moment was Kara said, I can't whisper because I'm on mobile, but don't vote me out, hoes. The Nairi boys are shocked to find out that Missy flipped on Chelsea. Of course, they're shocked multiple times during this tribal council because they have no fucking clue what's going on. John bids all 62 of his coins to save Peroto. They end up all winning immunity, mostly because of his donation. Yeah, it's important to say... Uh, if Nick pr- actually held up to his promise with the people giving him coins, Neary would have won immunity if he didn't uh, cock them out last second. Yeah, they, they picked the worst guy to give all their money to. <laughs> yeah, and it's also worth noting that the Neary plan going into tribal council was to split the vote onto John and Kara. So by Nick holding back money and being a stingy little bitch, he allows the people that they want to target to be immune for the rest of the tribal. Mm. Sucks for them. I also think like, I don't know that that would have even happened because they were so all over the place. I think that's what those boys wanted, but the rest of these people put a kibosh on a lot of that. Um, So Chelsea screws up. This is where Chelsea ends up getting herself into hot water. She screws up the whispering and instead of whispering to Aaron, She messages uh, Missy directly, saying that Missy has betrayed everyone on Miyumbo. So that's really when Missy goes on the war path against Chelsea for throwing her name out there. The Nairi boys are trying to tell them that Jessica was booted by accident. (laughs) I mean, whoops. Lauren had a couple of great lines in public here. She says, Missy is gunning for me hardcore. I did nothing to her. Chelsea says, same. Lauren says to Chelsea, I know I did nothing to you guys. On day five, you came to me wanting Missy out. I knew you were lying because you two were tight. Basically, you tried to trick me into targeting her, but you failed. You guys are bullies, and I'm so sad right now. God, Lauren. There's also the question of a lot of people, I think, assumed that by bidding for this public immunity idol and getting it, Lauren was just immune this council, which she certainly was not. (laughs) Yeah, uh, I'm so glad she didn't play it, too. mm Mm-hmm. Well, we took too long to put it in her confessional. She didn't know how to play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I don't have confidence that she'll know how to play it when time comes for that to happen. The more the season goes on, the more I think that Lauren like displays more of like a Nora personality where people just don't know what to do with her. Oh, because she, she just says everything to your face and she doesn't give a fuck. She freaks Aaron the fuck out. I love it. There, there was something funny pre- pre-swap where Aaron's trying to apologize to Lauren and she's basically telling him no. <laughs> it's, it's so Lauren says to Missy, we won't get into how much you manipulated me and how jealous you are of me. Maybe Elizabeth too. I don't know, but I really did nothing to you, but whatever. Blindside commence. I am going to play these idols strategically and shake everything up. Game on. I love how she included the uh, parentheses S as to imply that she has more than one idol. And this <laughs> is, this is the time where all the votes start flipping on a Chelsea and Dean decides to take a stand and try to pull together votes for Angelina. The votes do end up tying, which was incredible. I, th- I really thought we were going to get into a rock situation shortly. Then Missy pulls out her idol and plays it on Angelina, only to find out that it was not eligible to be played anymore. He was asking me this in her confessionals while I was tallying the votes. You know, had I been in a, in a worse mood, I probably would have just not allowed her to play that second idol because really she asked me while I was tallying votes, which is the absolute worst time to ask me anything because I'm creating yeah, a tribal she council. asked you idol rules 30 seconds before votes were due. Yeah. I mean, it's like, why didn't you, you had an hour and a half to ask me that. <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you doing? Uh, so I did end up allowing her second idol to be played because she did play it. 40 seconds after the deadline, but she did have the question about the first one. So 
I would have thought it would have been a little unfair having not answered her question to not allow her to play that other idol. But nonetheless, she did reveal that she had two idols to everyone. Uh, so that in itself was a little bit, bit of a punishment for her. Ultimately, all of Angelina's seven votes get canceled out. Chelsea ends up going home. And that's where we merge. Anything I missed in this clusterfuck? I think it's a good overview. It was wild. I couldn't make it back through the 30 pages worth of whispers to try and figure out anything different than what you just outlined. Yeah, there are because over, they were whispering nonstop. There are over 650 posts in that thread, which is ridiculous. You you look away for a minute. You are two pages through. I'm yes. going to say this was probably up there with the craziest nights in stranded history. And understand, I'm saying that given the history of this t- this particular twist, where the first time we did it, my wife wins individual immunity and then immediately tells everyone to vote someone else out. The next time we do it, Brian ends up getting rocked out of the game. So this is not something that's uncommon. However, I've never had that much insanity in such a short amount of time. I can only imagine what being on the other end of it was like for these players, but this has to be the ultimate way to kick off a merge. Yeah. And to talk about the votes a little bit there, as we said, it was a seven to seven, but really it was all five of the Neary tribe voting out Angelina, all four of the Peroto tribe voting out Chelsea, and then the Miombo tribe split where Chelsea and Tommy went against Angelina and Angelina, Dan and Missy went against Chelsea. So it was really interesting how they just kind of picked two targets from the same tribe that was, you know, imploding in on itself. And then the other tribes all voted together in separate directions. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a good summary of the pre-merge. We're about to get into a pre-merge podcast with a lot of our pre-jury. We're calling it the pre-jury trip. We're going to bring in those guys to talk. So I'm going to leave a lot of the maybe gaps we have for them to fill in. And then we'll have another separate podcast detailing the players of the merge so let's keep this all focused on the pre-swap is there anything we miss that we should talk about before we bring in the pre-jury i think we should talk about how this is maybe top to bottom one of the strongest newbie pre-jury casts yes absolutely i'm gonna catch flack because going into the season i was not hype about it i think we had a, a few dropouts that really made me disappointed and a weird timeline gap where you know i had forgotten about some of the applications so Kind of cobbled together a little bit, despite having a very long time to cast. But for me, it was unexpected. I think definitely one of our best casts overall. I think there's very few gaps in uh, entertainment from these guys. Yeah, I'm excited for this uh, pre-jury podcast coming up. So yeah, and I think, you know, I'll be listening. It's hard because we lost some great players going into this merge. You know, we like to have all of our stars in the merge, but... That provided us with some amazing blindsides and moments that uh, I did not see coming. I don't think anybody could have possibly seen coming. So, you know, you got to lose some to get some big moments pre-merge. I think that's going to attribute to this entire season being entertaining, which we will hope, knock on wood, that the merge continues being as entertaining as it has been. Perfect. All right, I'll mute myself. Come on in, pre-jury. All right, I'm going to start. Piper says, come on in. I'm going to start unmuting some of the (laughs) pre-jury. (laughs) Oh. <laughs>